My name is Lauren. If you are new here, if you're not new, then welcome back. I'm a fourth year medical student. I'm in the car, as you can see, and I'm on my way to take step two. I'm very scared, but I'm also zen. Kind of, not as zen as I was before step one, but I'm just hoping things go well and the score keeps going up. And yeah, we're staying positive. I'll see you guys later after I am liberated from the burden of this exam and my last licensing exam before I'm officially an MD. And you know, I have to graduate too, but you know. Many unbearable hours later. Good morning. Oh god, this angle is horrid. Is that better? Good morning. Today is July 10th. Wednesday, July 10th. The Wednesday is important. And I'm getting my step two score today. I'm supposed to get it today. I'm on a rotation. I somehow have to survive this day <laughs> while not obsessing over this because obviously it's a, just a regular Wednesday for everyone around me. I just shook my hair out so I feel like it just looks a little crazy. The way it usually goes, or at least it did for step one, is at 10.30. I should get an email saying your score is going to come out at 11 a.m. And I will obviously be in the hospital. And then I once again cannot open my score myself. So I'm actually going to meet up with my parents today. They're going to drive all the way to my apartment. They're so amazing for that. Because I was definitely willing to meet them halfway in a parking lot. But they're gonna come here and we're gonna open it together and hopefully it'll be really good and we'll celebrate and we'll get food and all of that. I also am going to make them like a little like scorecard cheat sheet, which I don't know, it might sound silly. And my mom, I told her all my practice exam scores so she knows like the trajectory. I'm pretty sure she knows like my ultimate goal of what I would love to hit on the real thing. But I just think if you're not in medicine, it's kind of like hard to understand. Okay, I know this number is only five points away from this number, but this number is actually not that great, but this number is really good. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna just make a little cheat sheet with like numbers and emojis. <laughs> so she can like fix her face as the emoji and then, so I'm like prepared and then tell me the score, you know what I mean? And then the intrusive thoughts are happening, which like they randomly pop up of like, what if I didn't do well, blah, blah, blah. but. During my last section, the exam is eight sections. During my last section, halfway through, the power went out and my screen went black. And everyone's screen went black. And then like the test facilitator, preceptor, whatever, came in and she was like, don't panic. It, it would have paused the exam. Like, it'll all be back, blah, blah, blah. Like, don't worry. So she got it back up, but it took like, took like eight, 10 minutes. And it was back where it was and I had all the time. And when I left, I got the paper that said your step two CK exam has ended. But the intrusive thoughts are like, what if the exam didn't even save? Like, what if it didn't get sent to USMLE? What if I have to retake it? Like, oh my God. Like if I don't get my score today, I'm calling them. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just really scared. Anyways. I'm just like, I just was casually checking the time again to see if it had hit, you know, 10.30, but it's still 7.30, so, you know. Hi, guys. Um, I just feel like it wouldn't be me without a bit of drama, right? Like, that's just, that's, that's the role that I play. I, it was like 10.30, no email. 10.45, no email. So I'm frantically texting my friend. I'm like, hey pal, did you get an email? Like we did before step one, around like 10.30 saying, your score is getting released today at 11. He's like, I did, but I heard that no scores are getting released this week based on Reddit. <sighs> I 
So I told Andrew I'm gonna cry. And that I can't even find the Reddit post. I'm like frantically trying to find this Reddit post. Can't find it. He finds it immediately because he's like the FBI and send me screenshots and I'm just like, like honestly, I do wanna cry. Like I do wanna cry. And it's just because there's so much build up up to this day. And if I wasn't like so sure I was gonna get it today, because my exam was on the 24th of June and today's July 10th. So it's been two and a half weeks. My exam is on a Monday, two and a half weeks. So I was like so sure I was getting it today and like there's been so much build up. My parents are coming. I mean, I'm just gonna tell them now, like come next week, but it's just like, I was so ready for like the burden to be lifted. Like if they had told me in advance, like, hey girl, you're not getting it on the 10th, you're gonna get it the week after. Then I would have been fine. You know, it would have been cool because I would have known. But yeah, I'm not getting it today. I'm just like frustrated. I just wanted to know. I just wanted to be free. I just wanted to see like a great number because we have to be positive. So when I read that, there were like tears in my eyes. And then of course my tenning walks in and it's like time to round. <laughs> time to round. So I'm like blink, blinking, like getting it together. So that's it for today. I'll see you guys on the 17th, one week from today. And I guess I'm gonna go into that day without any expectations and hopefully we'll get the score that day. My score report is available. How am I supposed to survive until I'm dismissed to open it? I'm, I'm not gonna make it, I'm not gonna make it. It's all I can think about. I'm like, I'm not listening to anything anyone's saying to me right now. I'm literally just distracted thinking about my score. How am I going to make it? How am I going to make it? I don't know. The time has come. <laughs> okay, I'm like, I'm freaking out. Okay. Okay, the time has come. It's 546. And I have been staring at... You won't even be able to see. I've basically been staring at the email that said I got my score all day. I've kept looking at it. And it's been really hard not to open it, but we're gonna open it in a second. I have my lovely assistant, aka my boyfriend, who's gonna open it for me. And I gave him a little emoji code so he can understand like how I feel about each score. I'm like so scared. I don't know what to do. Wait, can you just like tilt this? Like I just don't want to see it. Okay, so just like for step one, I want you to open it, but don't say anything. I got it. You have it open? Yeah. Hold on, let me say a prayer. Let me say a prayer. Okay, tell me. You want the actual score? Or you want like the face, God? I want the score. 246. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Sorry, the face got said to do this. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's fine. Okay, so 246. I'm not mad about it. I'm not like elated either. I'm kind of like, it's fine. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> wow, it has been some time. I think it's been like a month since I opened my score, maybe like three plus weeks. Um, yeah, disclaimer, I fully intended to look a little, oh, hi Azula. I really wanted to look a little cuter than I look right now for this wrap up, but I'm currently on my sub eye. This is my first day off after working eight days straight and I have to go back to work tomorrow. So like this is the maximum amount of effort that i had to like put into myself let's just jump into it step two there's so much to talk about i'm trying to make this controlled and concise because we know i can go on and on and on i wrote down some points that i want to go over and if you've seen all of the episodes of dedicated diary season two i feel like i explained a lot in each episode about what i was doing and everything so hopefully i don't have to go too in depth about everything so the first thing i want to talk about is how long i studied 
I studied one week kind of randomly, which I like barely even count that week. And then I studied during my IC rotation part time, which was four weeks long. I had Saturday off and then life would happen. And sometimes I would like miss a day each week. So I would say I studied like five to six days each week um, part time. And then for dedicated, I studied for three weeks and then I took my exam how I studied. So when I was in the ICU and I was studying part time, I was literally in a rotation, very intense rotation. And then I would stay at school. Sometimes I would go to the cafe after my rotation that day and I would study for a couple hours. So I would do like an hour and a half to two hours of Anki. And then I think like 20 or 25 year old questions or instead of UWorld, I would do half of a shelf exam. So 25 questions from a NVMe shelf exam. When I was in dedicated, I would study for like eight to 10 hours a day and I stopped taking days off. So for five days a week, I would do like two plus hours of Anki and I would do 40 year old questions and then I would do an entire shelf exam which is 50 questions an entire NVMe shelf exam that was five days of my week out of seven and then I would take a full length practice NVMe step two exam which is five hours and then that's all I would do on that day. So I would take the rest of the day off after those five hours of studying. And then the next day I would review that entire step two practice exam. And then like the day after that, I would like, kind of like start the cycle all over again. The Anki deck that I was doing was the Anking step two decks. And I had them separated by like internal medicine, surgery, pediatrics. I would pull cards from all of them every day and then if I got a question wrong on an, a shelf exam or on UWorld then I would either like find a card from On King and add it to a separate deck or I would make a card and add it to a separate deck and that's just because I wanted like a deck full of cards of questions that I had gotten wrong so I wanted to make sure I like went through those cards every day. And then I had my other deck, which was like a humongous deck with thousands of cards that I did not finish from On King that I would just like also go through some of them every day, however many I got done in those like two plus hours. And then I talked about this in my last video, so I won't go too in depth, but after I took a couple full length practice step two exams, then I would use that data, see where my weak points were. And then I would focus some of my question sets on my weaker topics. On top of like the things I just said, I also bought Amboss for the library. I think it's like $10 a month or something. And if I ever had a question on what question I just got wrong or what I was like learning about that day, I would look it up on Amboss. I think it's really important to have a stable medical search engine to look things up in because you can't just be Googling every time you need further clarification on something. I think you can also like maybe find a video, but for me, the fastest and most effective thing to do was to use the Amboss library and I highly recommend it. I think it's so detailed and if you read through, I don't know, an article on UTIs, for example, and you can learn about like different things about the UTI, the presentation, the treatment plan, like all of that, how to evaluate if someone has a UTI. And then if you see, I don't know, like an antibiotic that you don't know when you're looking at the treatments and you can like click on that antibiotic and then learn more about that antibiotic and other things you can treat with that antibiotic. So I just like how you can like just keep going through Amboss and like just keep clicking things and keep learning more and more if you need to. So yeah, the things that I used were Anki, UWorld, and the NVMe exams and then Amboss. And then on my last like two days of studying before the exam, I went through the Amboss top 200 step two topics. So that was like an additional purchase on top of the Amboss library and the question bank is a little expensive. <laughs> um, but you gotta do what you gotta do to like do your best. So. 
I did that for step one. I thought it was like a really amazing thing that really helped me for step one. So I did it again for step two. And I think a lot of the things did come up on my real exam, which is good. I think the things that boosted my practice scores the most are probably the shelf exams that I took. So I don't know if you're like running out of time and you're kind of choosing what to do last, I would say probably do shelf exams on topics that you're weakest in. But if you have the time, I still think the Emboss Top 200 topics was a great thing to do. My practice exam ritual. Okay, so every week I would take a practice exam. And I'm gonna go through my scores in a second. And my ritual, I tried to have like a really good routine before each exam. So then when I took my real exam, it was just like, we've done this a million times. We're just like doing it one more time. So I would always like set up my exam station here with anything I needed in reach, water, chapstick, tissues, like anything I thought I would need, I just wanted it next to me, which you're not gonna be able to bring all that stuff into the real thing, but I just think focusing wise in my home, I thought that was nice. So I wouldn't have to be like, oh my God, my lips are dry, but I'm only halfway through this section. Like that's gonna bother me for the rest of the section that I'm taking. And then I would sit down and I would write out all of the biostatistics equations and because I was doing that every single exam, I learned the equations very well and I was also like very comfortable on like quickly writing them down when I sat down for the real exam and I did that during the tutorial section of all the practice exams and the real exam as well. And then <laughs> I would, when I was home and on my real test day, I would like actually stand in this spot, like right in front of my bed and I'd look out the window and I would listen to one specific song and that was just like my pre-exam song and it made me feel very emotional and honestly, I cried before every single exam. Even if I didn't feel like I had to, I just like, the song made me cry and I did that on purpose and I did it because all my emotions were out and then like a couple minutes later when I actually would sit down and start taking the exam, we were all business. Like there was no emotion left we're all business, we're focusing, and I wouldn't get like frazzled during the exam and feel like I was gonna cry because I didn't know like the last five questions or anything like that. So I definitely think you should have just like a motivational song that is personal to you and that just makes you feel good and like you know if you're ever, I don't know, taking the exam and you feel nervous, you can always like think back to like your song or whatever you wanna do. Oh, and then another thing that I forgot to say, when I would write down the equations, and I talked about this in maybe episode, like my second to last episode before this, I would also write down affirmations on the same page that I wrote down all my equations on, and then that way, if I ever was feeling like I was getting things wrong and I didn't know anything or something like that, I can always refer back to my affirmations and feel like recentered and like motivated again and like believe in myself again. If you feel like you get 10 questions in a row wrong, it really does affect you. So I think as long as you're able to bring yourself back, then, you know, you'll be fine. But I think it's a skill that sometimes you need to learn when you're practicing. And then after I would listen to my song, I would of course go to the bathroom. And then I think I would like sit down and I would take the exam. My phone would always be on do not disturb. Yeah, I think that was like my ritual. On actual exam day, I did all of that at home and then my boyfriend drove me to the test taking center, which I think it, it kind of depends on how you are, but I think if someone who is part of your support system can drive you, it just is nice to not be like super alone right before and right after the exam. But I also understand the other side of it, like if you just wanna drive yourself and like kind of be in your feelings before you get there, then I think both things are a good idea. And then you can actually bring a water bottle into step two. It might be test center dependent, but if your water bottle was like the normal water bottle size or smaller, like 16.9, and it was like a store-bought water bottle, not like a reusable one, then they actually let you bring it in. Unfortunately, my water bottle was a little bigger than that, so they didn't let me bring mine in, but they let everyone else bring theirs in. So I would say bring that on test day, just in case your test center lets you do that. You also are allowed to use your phone when you're on a break. 
during the real test. My phone was on do not disturb the entire day, so I would never be like texting anyone. I also did not look anything up during the exam or like after the exam. There's literally no point. Please don't do that to yourself. It's so not necessary. It's just gonna stress you out more and you'll just get frazzled and it's just gonna do more harm than good. So I didn't do that. But towards like the last maybe like three sections, I was starting to get a little tired and the real exam is eight hours of questions and then you get like 45 minutes to one hour total for a break. So you kind of have to like split that up and choose how you split it up throughout the day. So when I started to get tired on my breaks, my test center allowed us to go outside on our breaks as well. So I would actually stand outside I would feel the sun, I would like feel the breeze and I would play like a hype song to just like get my energy back up and then kind of like help wake me up and like help keep me going. So if you're allowed to do that, then I recommend doing that as well if you feel like you need it. And before you take your exam, I think it's a great idea to try to plan out the breaks. I also think sometimes things happen that are unexpected, like you were planning to have a break one section after the current one that you're taking but you really have to go to the bathroom or you're dying to sip some water or something so my breaks did not go fully as planned but it was fine it all worked out and i feel like i had actually enough break time which i didn't think i would so the next thing i think to talk about is my practice exam scores lol so let's get into it i'm gonna put them on the screen the very first time i took a practice exam was march 25th and this was like before I started studying for step two, like specifically, of course, you're kind of studying all year, but I just wanted to like see where I was at starting point wise. So I took a practice exam and I took NBME 11 and I scored a 225. So that was like my baseline. And then one month later on April 29th, I took another practice exam and what had happened in that month between was I went to AMEC in New Orleans, which was a lot. I got my wisdom teeth out, which was also a lot. And then I studied for like one week, but it wasn't like very committed, disciplined studying. It was just like some studying. So I took another practice exam and I also got a 225, but like looking back, I didn't do anything crazy to like get anything higher. So that was kind of a waste. And the second one that I took was NVMe 10. So then I started in the ICU. I studied the way that I already said in the ICU. And then when I was done in the ICU, it was June 3rd and I took NVMe 12 and I got a 232. So finally saw an increase. I felt like, you know, maybe I could actually not get a 225 on the real thing because seeing the same score twice can definitely be disheartening but looking back like what was I really expecting this wasn't dedicated now so I started like doing what I said I was doing for dedicated studying that way really committed every single day so my next exam was June 10th I took NBME 13 and I got a 239 I think the exam that I filmed was when I got a 232 I think and then kept studying, took another exam on June 16th, so six days later, and I got a 243. So I cracked the 240s, which I was very happy about. I heard from a lot of people that it was hard to crack the 240s with practice exams, so I felt like I was in a really good spot since I did crack it. And that was NVMe 14. And then I took the new free 120 on June 20th, four days before my real exam and I got a 75%. And I think with the free 120 for step two, it's really hard to figure out the meaning of your score because you're used to seeing the step two score, but that's obviously a percentage. So what does that 75% on the free 120 actually mean? I really couldn't tell you. <laughs> I don't know if that is the exact same score as before or I was going up, up, up. Like I have no idea what that fully means. I think. The best thing about the free 120 for step two is just to keep practicing questions, but I don't think from what I've seen on Reddit and from what I've heard from other people and from like how I felt about it myself, I don't think you should focus on the score too, too much unless your score is like, you know, like crazy bad maybe, then I don't know. But I, I think the point of that is just to just 
do more questions. Then I took my real exam on June 24th and I got a 246 as you saw in the clip before this. So I want to talk about my score and my reaction to the score. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of build up to this and there is for everyone. But as you know, I thought I was going to get my score a week before I actually got it. And then I had to wait again. And then the day that I got it was so stressful. There was so many things going on in life, like just in that day. And I was like just going through a lot. And then on top of it, I knew on the NBME website, my score was available. And I was just like trying to survive that day. So that's like the mood I was going into it with. The score that I got does kind of fall in line with my practice exam scores. However, I heard from so many people that their last practice exam and their real exam, there was this huge bump, this huge jump in numbers. People were telling me they got eight points higher than their best practice exam, 11 points higher, 14 points higher. And I was like, oh my God, okay. My best practice exam is a 243. Like, I could crack the 250s. I could get like an amazing, amazing score and I'm gonna be so happy when I see it. So my expectation was, I don't wanna say my expectation was high, but I was very, very hopeful that I was gonna get just like an amazing score, right? I knew I wasn't gonna open the score myself. And I think I might've explained this maybe in this video, but I made like score ranges with emojis on how I wanted the person to read the score because I didn't want, so my boyfriend ended up reading it. It was supposed to be my parents, but they went away and then celebrated their anniversary. Happy for them. Um, but my boyfriend ended up reading it and I didn't want him to like see like 235 and say like, you got a 235 and I'm like, woo! And then I'm like, wait a second, a what? So I just wanted his reaction to correlate with how my reaction would have been if I opened the score. So the face that I put for the range that included 246 was exactly how he read it and that's how I wanted it to be read. So I didn't want it to seem like he did what he did for step one, <laughs> which, is, which was build suspense. <laughs> and then when he said that score, I was just like, okay, it's not a bad score. It's not an amazing score. It's an average score. And like, that's cool. But in my head, I thought I was gonna have this crazy bump and my bump was three points. So then I was just kind of like, what did I do differently than all these other people that saw this amazing increase? And I was kind of down about not getting a good like number jump, but I wasn't as much down as like my score. I don't know if that makes sense, but I took like a couple days to kind of process it. There's like a couple of required meetings you have to have in preparation for residency applications. And I've talked about my score in length with faculty members and they you know reassured me like my score is literally fine and there's nothing to worry about my score is not going to close any doors for me which is great but it was a very weird reaction and it was oh my god my camera's overheating and it was just kind of like such a crazy build-up for something that felt so anticlimactic and that's how I reacted. But I also just want to say if you got a 246 as well or something around that, I don't want you to think like your score is bad because it's not, it's really not. I have made peace with my score. I am fine with my score. It's just like, I hope I explained why I reacted that way well. And I hope nobody feels like if they got something like that, then they shouldn't be excited about it because I think you should be excited about it. It's just my experience was, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it was unique or if, if that, I don't know. I just hope I explained it well enough. And if you got something around that or higher or a little lower, I think you did amazing. And I hope you're proud of yourself because I'm proud of you and I'm proud of myself. I just, I just like in the moment, there was a lot happening and like a lot going through my head. Guys, this was supposed to be short and it's not short. I feel like I'm talking so much. I think I'm almost done. So my final thoughts. The first thing I want to say is your journey is your journey. I think for step one, you either pass or you fail. So everyone who succeeds gets the same result, which is a pass. But for step two, basically feel like you're reduced to a number. And I think that can be really hard because numbers are very easily ordered. And for me, it was easy to feel like if I got a number and someone else 
Like I got a 246, but if someone else got two points higher than me, that means they're better than me, that means they're smarter than me, they're gonna be a better doctor than me. Like it felt very easy to like jump to that conclusion when that is not at all the case. I think try to avoid that. I think also like this number is not like the most important thing on your application. It's not the most important thing in your medical journey. I think it's just like something you have to do and take. And the number that I got today, as in like a couple weeks ago, is not gonna necessarily correlate to the doctor that I'm gonna be tomorrow. Oh no! My camera overheated. I don't know what I said last, but step two is not as bad as step one. It's so much better. I promise you when you're studying for step one, it really feels like what you're studying will never matter. And like your patient is never going to ask you what chromosome their illness is from. And like step one is, it feels insane when you're studying for it. But step two, it's about what diagnosis is this? What is the treatment? How do you diagnose it in general? Like, who is at risk for this? Why are they at risk? It's all very relevant things and it feels like a relevant exam. So it's like more educationally fun to study for. I think you should find happy moments. And I talk a lot about this in my like step one dedicated wrap up. Like, eating foods that you like, watching shows that you like, seeing people that make you happy, exercising if that makes you happy, like just do whatever you kind of like want to do to make you happy in like little moments throughout the day or at the end of the day or on the weekend whenever you have time away from studying and like don't feel guilty about doing that and then that leads me into my last point which is you should take days off if i had to go back i would take one day off a week and dedicated but i just got too scared and frazzled and i just thought what do i look like taking a day off if my score doesn't increase or if my final score is not good so i got tired and there were like a couple days where i couldn't study like my full eight to 10 hours because I was so burnt out, but I could have prevented myself from getting to that point if I just like kept having my one day off a week that I wasn't studying like I had in the ICU. So I think that's everything. I hope I talked enough. I feel like I talked a lot, way more than I thought I would. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Or if they're more personal, you can also DM me on Instagram and be patient with me, but I will get back to you. If you're studying for something, good luck. I'm rooting for you. I'm proud of you already for all the work you've done. And I will leave it here. If you like this video, like the video, comment down below what you're studying for, what you've conquered, what you have taken and done well in or anything like that study wise and i'd love to just like chat about that with you in the comments and support you and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed i really hope you enjoyed watching i hope you enjoyed dedicated diary season two i do have to take step three that is the last one thank god <laughs> but i will take it in like i think my first year of residency and Will there be time to film an actual dedicated diaries? Who knows? So this might be the last dedicated diaries ever, but either way, I hope you enjoyed it. And I enjoyed filming it and bringing you along. And I will see you in the next video, which will be back to fourth year rotations. Bye.